more comfortable you are being vulnerable, the better you are. Being 100% genuine, that is the essence of whacking and punking. Welcome to Dance Specific Talks. This podcast is made for us dancers, and our goal here is to inspire dancers from all over the world to become better, both on and off the dance floor. We want to provide you with a platform where we dancers can share and learn from each other. So let me introduce to you your host for this podcast, Teaser, and remember as always, by dancers for dancers. The party people, and welcome back to another episode of your favorite dance podcast, Dance Specific Talks. Today we are traveling all the way to South London as we are meeting not only the dancer from Whacking House and Locking, but also stuntman, actor, and much more. We are going to talk with no one else than Bagsy. Now, let's get it going. Welcome to this interview, birthday boy, Bagsy. Yeah, what's up, what's up? Hello, everybody. Hey, Teresa, how are you? Was it Teddy? Uh, I am. That's it. Teaser, Therese, whatever. Yeah, yeah, all works. Where are you located right now? I am in London right Mm. now, South London. Yes. South London. Before we get into what that means to be from South London. I actually would love to start off with a little bit of a get to know you question. What in your life are you devoted to right now? Oh, right now. I am devoted to stunts right now because I'm an actor and I do stunt performances. So I'm currently focused on training for the British Stunt Register to be an official stunt performer. Uh, in the UK and the world. So that is a lot of my attention is on that. There's a lot of physical training for it. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. I saw one of your videos on your Instagram where it was like, oh, this is my stunt choreo. And I'm like, mind blow. I didn't know. But of course you have choreos in stunts. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So dope. That's so dope. All right. Well, we're going to get back to that. Uh, But to come to South London, was this where you grew up? Yeah, I was always born in the south, south of the river, south of the River Thames, uh, Stockwell, if anybody knows that ends, that's where I started, so I was born, brought up there, moved to West Norwood, and then finally now I am in East Croydon, I'm a Croydon boy, mm. which is kind of a weird area in London, because Croydon is London, but it isn't London, it's just weird, it's just because of the, uh, the postcode. Croydon looks like Amsterdam. It's kind of got an Amsterdam feel with all the trams and stuff like that. So it's kind of cute in its own way, but it's, uh, yeah, it's still part of London. Yeah. That's so funny. All right. So for people who are not um, familiar with London, there's different, like, um, what can you say? Identities or personalities? Massively. What part of your identity is South London and what does that mean for the people who never grew up there? (laughs) Ah, there's so many uh, memes and stuff about what part of London you're from, depending on your mannerisms, your behavior, how you dress, how you act. I am literally just me, personally. I am just me, mainly because um, I may have been brought up and born in in London, but I travel a lot. So I used to live abroad um, a lot. And my accent, uh, for the better part of it, isn't really South London accent. South London accent is a little bit more deeper, a bit more harder, a bit more gruffer. Um, which, and it's pretty cool. It's very, really, very, very cool. Uh, mine is a bit more international, my accent. But in terms of how I identify with South London, Oh, there's so many beautiful parts of it. You have Nigeria town, <laughs> Jamaica town, Chinatown. Oh, it's just, there's so much yeah. to South um, that I really, really connect with. That's so beautiful to hear. Like, I think that that 
sometimes we spend a lot of our life getting away from our birthplace and our identities and at some point you just realize that that's a part of you and and you start embracing that acceptance and um wherever you grew up you kind of get infiltrated with some kind of mindset what is a mindset that you you used to have growing up in south london that you maybe had to leave behind in order to develop yourself that's, that's a very good that's a very good question actually so um bravado being a man in south london there's a there's a certain status that comes with identifying as a as a male uh, as a masculine person and that is to not show emotion (laughs) not dance too much in the club look hard there's a lot of bravado that comes with it because it's um maybe not so much now but obviously during the time I was growing up bravado would equate some sort of high status maybe some wealth maybe some power maybe some sort of control um, within the realm of masculinity so you'd end up conforming to how other males are at that point in time and not really focusing on who you are as a man because you you tend to be quite you uh, focus on what society deems a man should be and how a man should act or if I was to go back in time how a boy should act and how a boy should conduct himself and carry himself in the world so I had to unlearn that by leaving the country stepping out of the bubble and discovering different cultures, different identities, different ways in which people understand masculinity and femininity, and obviously build my own character. And when I did that, and then you come back, you realize you had to go through what I went through back in the day in order to be where I am now, and really appreciate the change um, that I have gone through to be this to be bagsy right now (laughs) you know what I mean yeah yeah for real it's it's so interesting because I when I checked out and I did some research about you one of the sentences on your website that stood out to me was I'm constantly exploring the depths of my potential yes and we talk a lot about identity but there's also another side of that which is the potential right like there's a part of who we are and exploring that and then there's also the potentials of what we could be or, yes. you know, get into our personality. What does exploration of potential mean for you? Yeah. So this is, um, this is an interesting one because my parents, my, my lovely, beautiful parents are from a, uh, an age, a very traditional age of brick and mortar type work, bootstrap very conservative way of living and thinking where you go to school, you get a degree, you know, you get your grades, you get a job, you stay in that job, you do well in that job, you get a car, you get a house, you get married, you settle. It's very, it's very linear. So there is that and it works for some people, but I find that as a human being, just as a person, we have unlimited potential to do so much more and to create and to explore and to do great things. And I noticed that I had an interest to just create. I wanted to do something creative. Um, I just wasn't too sure what it was. So I went into engineering first and I started to build and design airplanes and airplane engines. That was my, my way in creatively, but also to please the parents because it was like engineering. So after that, I realized that there's so much more that I wanted to do. So I wanted to dance. I wanted to teach. I wanted to perform. I wanted to be in an environment I could create and see how far my mind and my body and my my soul could go. That's why you may see me doing martial arts. I do tricking. I'm doing stunts. I'm doing dancing, choreography, battling, teaching. Anything where I feel that I can explore the depths of who I am, my potential. And it's not to a point where I'm stretching myself thin. I'm still working within my zone of confidence. You know, everybody has a 
uh, a zone of confidence and, a, and a, a unique genius that you should focus in and work on. And my one just happens to be performing. Mm. And performing is so broad that I could do so many different things. So that's why I was doing, like I said, battling, teaching, um, showcasing, theater, film and TV. There's so much I can do. And I enjoy that because there's always something new to learn. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoy the journey. Like now, I mean, I'm getting older, but I love new beginnings. And I like to see how far can my body take? Can my body go this far? Can my mind go this far? And I'm like, yeah, I, I love a new challenge. And I love exploring who I am and mm-hmm. see how far I can go, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the performance is the stem and you have all these branches that are yes. branching out from it. And a lot of the times when we see, uh, yeah, I mean, you're a very successful dancer and a performer. So it's easy to just see the easy part and the and the, the things that look so self-confidence. Yes. If you look back at the branches you have on your on your stem, on your tree, where would you say that you have experienced most self-doubt and how has that journey looked like for you? Right. I would say when I am battling, not so much now, but before, when I was battling, or I would say competing, um, because when you compete, there's a lot of pressure to perform. And you always tend to have two goals in your mind. There's, there's the goal of like winning winning the competition and then there's the goal of doing well so it's like your time you tend to be quite torn between the two so whenever i lose it used to break me down i get distraught massively and it 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 took some of my mentors to help to guide me through and help me understand that it doesn't matter like it really doesn't matter whether you win or lose so those were kind of like there were low points, but there were learning points as to understanding what is more, what is really important in my life as a performing artist. And the moment that clicked, my actual performing ability went up, which is mm-hmm. really, you think it's strange, but that's actually how it works naturally in life. The less you care, the more you do well. The more comfortable you are being vulnerable, the better you are. It's, it's, uh, It's a unique trait and it's a steep learning curve that is more difficult for somebody who is younger because you're always conflicted with who to impress. You're always looking for validation from outside. You're always looking for praise from outside. Everything is external. You want to please everybody. You want to do well in everything. You want to win because it means something that you tend to neglect your inner self and what it means for you. So that was the turning point. And yeah, I mean, it's nice to, to be upset and you know, shows my passion. Like, I really wanted it. But in hindsight, it's, it's not all that important. It really isn't. And it, in that, that switch for me in my life for the yeah. competitive world. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, I, I always say I love <laughs> being 30 now <laughs> and up because I do feel that I was putting a lot of my self-worth in the hands of others yeah. before in my 20s. And now I feel like, no, like it's in me. And then, you know, of course, doesn't mean that you automatically don't have insecurities, but it feels different being yes. a little bit older. So if the the drive where you came in as a battler, as wanting to compete, as wanting that validation, when that drive change what is fueling your hunger now ah i tell you what seeing other people smile when i dance period there's nothing more rewarding than you see (laughs) when you are performing and when you're dancing whatever it is you're doing you're actually giving somebody a gift who's watching you it is your duty as a performer to yourself to give the best version of yourself to people who are watching. That is what they want to go home with. They don't really care who wins or who loses. They want to go home remembering how you made them feel. Mm. If, you, you, if you did that, you're winning a thousand percent because 
you are immortalized in their minds. They will never forget you for who you are. They may forget a winner just for winning sake or loser for losing sake. But if you made them feel something emotionally connected to you when you dance and you perform, you're winning. And that's my drive. Whatever I do, I want to be an inspiration to others, uh, especially young males, especially young black males, I would say. Um, young black straight males, especially because of whacking, because of the dance. Um, but also, I just want people just to go home and, and, and have lived in the moment with me. You know, it's yeah. different when you're watching something on TV or on a screen. But when you're present there in a venue and you're seeing someone give their all, that is powerful stuff. It and that is. is that is that is where I'm at right now. Technically, yeah, we've got the techniques and stuff. And it's always good to show technique and and show your your um, your prowess and your control. It's nice, but to give your all on the floor to lay it all out that is beautiful. And you go home and you're like, "Wow, did I just witness that?" And that inspiration can live with them for the rest of their life. And that is that is where I am right now. That's uh, it's also so interesting you say, because I have your battle of summer dance whacking <laughs> playing up in my mind as we're speaking. Nice. Yeah. And I do think that there is a misconception with whacking that it is feminine. Whereas I know that in another interview with you, you were talking about the power and femininity yes. of that self-love that exists within femininity and also how the masculine side is sometimes struggling with i'm quoting becoming whole yes and unlocking the emotional side because that's yeah. when we are free and that's when we are whole and i think that that is maybe the misconception with whacking that it's not that it's feminine but it is putting your emotions out yeah. because if you don't show self love then there is no whacking really for me personally that when you are standing on stage you better be loving yourself until everyone in the room loves you yeah. with them you know what i mean exactly. and maybe maybe that is why it tends to look feminine but maybe it's actually about showing self love so openly that... you know what's crazy is that whacking was created by guys you way right? whacking was created by men Men, yeah, they were, yes, they were gay, but there were still men. Yeah. But the 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 thing about again, this this is the change point in my life is that any form of self expression, any form of showing emotion in whatever it is you're doing, was always deemed to be feminine. And when it was deemed to be feminine, it was associated with weakness. That was a struggle as a young black male that we always go through. If we show emotion, if we cry, if we're weak, if we express ourselves fully, we are weak. That is a huge misconception. It is complete reversal. But it took me to take that leap of faith and learn whacking, understand it, to understand that. Mm. And um, I give it up to Archie Burnett because it was in his class his first class that I actually cried in class and it scared me because I didn't know why I was crying, but he literally unlocked and made me feel like he understood what I was going through. That was powerful. And I was like, wow. And as soon as I did that, I realized it was almost like a massive weight just lifted off my shoulders. And when I experienced that, I knew this is the dance I want to do. Not just because of what I experienced, but now I wanted to show other men that you can do it too. You don't have to be gay to do this dance. You certainly don't need to look feminine to do this dance. You just need to be yourself. And I quote um, what Anna Lollipop Sanchez said to me when I first took up her lessons all those years ago, was that I asked her the dumbest question, perfect dumb question. Dumb questions are good, by the way. And I asked her, how does a man do whacking and not look gay? I needed to know. Yeah. I didn't understand it because it was, it was flooded with females and gay guys. And I was like, how does a straight male do whacking and not look gay? And she said it perfectly. She said, if you're gay, it will show in your dance. Huh. If you're not gay, it will show in your dance. 
that finished me. I was like, wow, this is about who you are, the self-love yeah. that you expressed, the self-worth that you expressed and telling your story, being a hundred percent genuine. That is the essence of whacking and punking. Yes. Do you think that that is also maybe why we don't see a lot of straight men doing it? Because it's actually not for the weak hearted and you got to put down your walls extra much in this particular style. If you're going to 100%. succeed and elevate. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's okay because that is a scary journey for anybody in life to take that leap of faith and to break down those walls and to open your heart. That is not easy. And it's, it's, it's easier for men to put the guard up and to show bravado and to, and to, to express uh, this outwardly energy of what masculinity looks like. But actually internally, you're, you're, you're missing something. You're missing the, the femininity. It's all part of us. When you think about it, we're both born of male and female we don't just have male energy we have female energy male and female mother and father it's together we can't just have the masculine energy and neglect the feminine energy we are not whole and that is the issue with a lot of young males especially when they go through mental health issues not being able to talk and express their emotions again because of the idea of weakness mm. but through this dance I aim and I hope, I hope I'm doing it to show that, oh man, Banksy's straight and he does wacky like that. What? I get that a lot. And when I hear that, it puts a big smile on my face and I'm like, okay, good. I'm, I'm doing something right. <laughs> I'm on the right path. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, whacking is also just one of your styles. It might it be one that you that we see you a lot in right now, but you're yes. also locking, you're oh, also doing house. Oh. And so how, if you would describe what these different styles mean to you in different yeah. ways and kind of, you know, maybe do, is it connected to different personality sides of you or how do you look at it? Music, mm. music first. When I was learning, it was all about the image, um, how it looked. You know, when he sees just a boo competition and these guys clean, it's just the image. Um, and I just wanted to try everything. But it was the music that I connected to massively. Mm. And I'm a club dancer. When you really think about it, I'm just a dancer. You know, I'm trying to move away from, well, I am moving away from being compartmentalized into a style. Oh, he's a locker. He's a house dancer. He's a whacker. Who I am, I'm, I'm a dancer. And if the music makes me feel like locking, I'm going to lock. If it makes me feel like doing house dance, I'm going to house. If it makes me feel like whacking, I'm going to whack. Mm. I'm not going to segregate these styles because it's all dance at the end of the day. It's all dance. And they all come from the clubs. They all stem from social dancing and social performance and social connection. It's all dance. So why should it be sex segregated mm. for me mm. so music yeah. definitely the music um, connects me to it yeah for sure what what kind of um emotions or different expressions do you connect to those different music genres and yeah okay so locking funk uh just being cool super fly big suits maybe i might be in a 70s 60s flares you know I've got big necklaces on, chains, super fly, pimp daddy, you know? <laughs> and, oh, I just, oh, you just, you just sit in the pocket and you, oh, funky is just, it's dope. It's fire. Mm. And with the house, sometimes I feel really flowy mm. and I'm just in my cell with the movement. I love the, 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 the combinations of floor work, but I had a bit of capoeira, the, the, the fast footwork and, and the, the movements and just the grooves. It's very sexy. It's very, I would say, ancestral houses for me. I feel a bit more, if I let myself go, I can feel a little bit more connected to, to earth, 
mm. to my homeland with that. It's a bit more ancestral, especially because of the beat. It can be quite hypnotic and you're just in a dream state. Whacking is me literally saying, I do not care. <laughs> I just, and, and you know, it's so freeing to say that, that you just, you just can't help but smile. You know what I mean? I'll be up in people's faces. I'll be on the wall. I'll be half naked. I'll be water everywhere. <laughs> I'm swinging from the deck. I don't care. And that's such a beautiful thing just to have and just to really enjoy. So, yeah. Does that, wow. make sense? Is that all my sense? I, yeah. lo- I love that. Yeah, I would say the word that comes up is, is a new word I use a lot. Unfuckable. Yeah, unfuckable. I see. I was. I wasn't gonna swear because I wasn't sure if I'm allowed to swear. It's okay. But this, <laughs> okay, because I was. I don't care. I was literally gonna say I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's too powerful. Like, I don't give a fuck. So unfuckable. Unfuckable. Yeah. yeah. Or unapologetically black. Unapologetically me. Mm. You know, just be unapologetic. Mm. You know, without hurting anyone, without disrespecting, without being offensive, just allowing yourself to be yourself. Without mm-hmm. question. Because oh, yeah. I used to get judged a lot when I was uh, younger. A lot. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. It's too much. Oh, what are you, do- you should be doing this. You should be doing that. It's a lot. Yeah. From external. And you just be like, you know what? Hmm. Unapologetic. I'm just going to do me. So when I read like what you just mentioned, it's the, it's the, the funk gives you that I, I just see the stank face, yeah. <laughs> but that, that little bit more like the, yeah, just the rawness of it all. You have the free flowing love union with house. You have uh, the charismatic stepping into your own freedom with whacking. And then my next question would be, if those are like personality traits, where do you think those come from in your life? Who in your family or upbringing or you know where do you think why do you feel like those are the things you're attracted to hmm i don't know you know i mean i would i would definitely say it's embedded in my dna as straight up i mean i probably got it from my mom if anything you know she's always been fun she loves music she always messes around My dad had a really nice interest in uh, jazz fusion, a lot of like jazz and Nova type music and really cool records he had. Um, But I didn't quite get as a younger kid. It was quite interesting, but I kind of liked it, but I didn't know why, which is really interesting. So maybe that was ingrained in me, but I think more importantly was me traveling. Mm. I think when I traveled and I left the country to find to find out who I am, then I realized, oh, snap, this is, this is me. When I let go, I can just let things flow. And I, I was able to have much, much more fun. And I didn't realize I had these personalities. I really didn't realize I had personalities. I would stress, though, that doing whacking actually helped my other styles. Mm. Massively. Yeah, Massively. because it helped that being unapologetic but also in the other styles yeah yeah i was able to like n- not care so much in my locking which made my locking a bit more more fun to do same in my house mm-hmm. yeah it was really it's really interesting isn't it to yeah. um understand how the mind and the spirit operates depending on what style of dance you do and how it affects you personally i would always say for every dancer every dancer should do whacking at some point in their lives because it's therapy hmm. <laughs> every human being needs therapy at some point in their life yeah you know yeah yeah no it it definitely yeah yeah you, i just i would say everyone should if you don't do working at least come and watch working because watch it. just just even being in the audience, you will not walk out the same person. You will have yes. a different, just like body positivity. There's generation, different generations in the same style. There is diversity. There is self-love. There is like, you know, yeah. sex appeal that, yeah. you know, with yourself. I don't, Unders- I don't know. How to and understanding it. your sexuality <laughs> as well. That's really powerful because there's a, there's a, there's a lot of 
young girls and women who don't really know how to express it, what it's, what is deemed, what's allowed, what's, what's deemed acceptable in society. But then you realize it doesn't matter. It's just about finding your own sexuality and your own sensuality within the style. Mm-hmm. And whacking can really help that because I've heard so many great stories from female hip hop dancers who were conflicted in finding out their femininity. Like, they're a woman. How do you express being a woman without yeah. trying too hard to be a woman when you are just a woman? And whacking allowed a lot of these women to just be women without having trying to stylize it, which was the issue. People are like, oh, it's a style. I have to style being a woman. No, you are a woman. Mm. You need to let that out. Yeah, so that that's, yeah, it's really, really interesting. Everybody should do whacking. Everybody yeah. should do whacking. Every da- <laughs> Everyone listening should do whacking. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But talking about that, you mentioned that you went out traveling. Yes. Let's talk about Chapter Japan. And you chapter are fluent Japan in japanese yes i am but yes. all Mad. like how did you end up there and how would you say that whole chapter has shaped you as a person as a dancer yeah um japan is the was the the, the greatest decision of my life ever to travel there and i kind of left not long after i finished some time at rolls royce uh, after, just after uni i was working as, as an engineer like i said uh, just after university And I just needed to do something different. I felt it in my heart. My vocation, my calling was towards something else. And I knew that at the time, even now, Japan was rated like the highest level of dancers in the world for all styles. From young kids that I would watch on YouTube and I was like, what are they eating? Like, how are these kids dancing at the level of grown men and women like how is this even possible um and that was a decision i made to go to japan by myself go out there find a job and uh, immerse myself in their culture uh, just to see if i can pick something up for that would benefit me as well and hopefully bring that back to the uk so yeah japan was um it's great oh i miss it now so much because they still lock their borders so i can't go Aww. in What is it that I, you miss the most? My friends. That's first, 100%. The food. <sighs> Onsens, which are just like uh, public baths. Beautiful, open air, big, you know, Japanese. Oh, it's beautiful, public baths. And um, yeah, just just even the weather. The weather's really nice over there. So, yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned that, like, as we know, Japan has some of the best dancers, funny enough, because it's not like they are such a groovy people as they are. They are they are very disciplined. They are yeah. like very polite. They don't uh, they're not loud. You know, so it's interesting how the hip hop genre and all the styles have kind of just got to Japan and became uh, very big. Did you? during your time there maybe find some secrets to why it became yeah 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 so so obviously the 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 americans when they first were like traveling the world in the 80s and stuff like that they went to japan a lot and japanese mentality and work ethic is extremely high it's ingrained in their culture to be to, to give a hundred percent in whatever it is they do And as a society, that's how they all see. So if you're not given 100%, society will look at you like, what are you doing? You need to work harder. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah. Because sometimes everybody seems to be the same and have to look the same, they have to conform the same way. There's not much room for individuality. So when they train something, they train it really, really well. And they study it really well i remember some of the og whacking punking dancers would tell me that they learned a lot from watching soul train on tv and they would emulate the moves like relentlessly learn them perform them teach invite um dancers from the states to come to japan perform that would inspire others and people would just 
just go on to it. I mean, the dancing culture, street dancing culture in Japan is insane. It's insane. In one city, there's a good, at least a hundred, maybe 200 dance studios for street dance. Wow. It's insane. And it's so crazy because you would think, especially style like whacking, but I also know dance hall. It also had some of the best uh, female dance hall dancers came from Japan early yeah. on. And it's interesting since, you know, you have that perception of Japan of like, marriage uh old gen old population yeah, sexless yeah. marriages uh romance is like secondary to career all yeah. those things and then you have amazing whackers all of a sudden that is like it's, expressing and yeah do you think that it's like a, a revolution in a way against the kind of norms of the society uh that i mean they still have a lot they have still have a lot to learn um, and it's mainly because there is always something missing with the dance in Japan, especially with whacking. With the majority of dancers, there's a, there's a minority of dancers who already have it, but it's finding it's the self-expression. Letting go in Japan is looked is frowned upon. Mm. Being overtly extra, if like the suits that I wear here and, and in Europe. It's normal. But if I go to Japan, it's seen as a comedian. Mm. If a Jap Japanese people would never wear what I wear, they would never dress how we dress because they'll be deemed as like, you're just being funny. You're being a comedian. You're not being serious. And then there is this notion of being serious about a dance, which is about learning technique, performing to rules, focusing, and the feeling and individuality and soul tends to get neglected mm. a lot. But those who do understand it are those who have left Japan and they've traveled to the States and Europe and Jamaica to immerse themselves in the culture. And it's just like, boom, mm. you know, like you are who you, you are, your, your network, your network, you know, your net worth is your network. So who you are, who you surround yourself with tends to have a, a profound effect on you. So when they did that and they came back to Japan, there's a reason why they're the best in Japan. <laughs> Now, because they have that Japanese work ethic, but they also understood the history, the culture, you know, and the origins, obviously, and, and the meaning behind it all. And they took that and they brought it back to Japan. So it's getting better now because Japan is being a bit more open to the world. And a lot of the dancers are seeing that traveling is important as well. And they're also inviting a lot of, um, I guess, foreign dancers from Europe and the States to go to Japan to hold workshops as well so that they can learn. They're a beautiful nation. They're always willing to learn and to listen, even if they're better than you. They won't say it, Like, it's such a, a humble nation. Yeah. Obviously, there's some who, who aren't, as you get in at most nations, but majority of them are really humble. And their eagerness to just learn and the love they have to learn, it's, it's very clear, you know. So revolution, I don't know. I'd say it's, it's, it's growing and it's getting better in japan 100 percent. beautiful i really hope i get the the chance to one day come and visit because it's one of my yeah. top countries on my list oh you go do um, it um yeah and talking about you mentioned your network is your net worth and all of that you have a big network in dancing but now you are also stepping into the acting more and more you also have the capoeira so you have the theater you have the capoeira you have the stunts and it's entering new networks it's a bit yes. scary to transition but what are some of your what are some of your visions with actually expanding and going into new areas so um i guess you find out that my network gets smaller and more not smaller in sense like it's a bad thing it's just more refined so you have like friends but then there's 
your core elemental people who are there for you, who uplift you, who inspire you for what they're doing, who have like have um, similar mindsets and similar drives and goals. And that tends to shrink a lot, you know, because I have a lot of friends, but, you know, I have friends who did go down the path of getting a job, house, car and family. And, you know, they, they hang out at the local pub and have a drink and talk about work. And I'm not that. So it doesn't mean they're a bad influence. I'm just not part of that world. So I have to refine my network and make it smaller. So with dance, I have quite a small network that we really drive and really build each other up. And with stunts, it's the same thing. Now I was lucky because I managed to find or connect with a, a very talented group of people on a, on a production last year and we've stayed in contact and we're all in the mindset of training to, to do better, to get on the register, to meet up, to talk about what we're doing. And every time we do that, we motivate each other. So I was lucky because I, you know, we fell into that and it happened organically. So it's not scary. I would say it's just, um, it's actually quite nice to have um, different networks because there are times when I bring them together mm. and um, you, you find out that we're all performers. Mm. We all have similar traits and tastes. It's just different realms, but we're all performers. We're all connected through artistry, through creativity and through this drive to explore our potential. So yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not scary at all, but it's challenging. But it's fun. It's lots of fun. And I'm very, very lucky to have this, uh, to have the group that I'm with, that I'm with. Yeah. That's amazing. And since it is your birthday and you have like a brand new year coming up for you. Yeah. Within the next year, what are some of the things you would love to accomplish? Is such a goal oriented word, but what are some things you would love to try out and? Mm get on your your you know makes me happy kind of list <laughs> for this upcoming year yeah i mean apart from completing some of the qualifications for the register that's a big one um i would love to create a piece for whacking but only guys only men it's my dream for a while just have an all male whacking collective just do shows and do performances and create content and i want to put it out there and it's just like men just cool and i just want to do something like that that would make me super happy if i could do that um and obviously to have my face on the billboards for the next marvel movie <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, they are. They need a new Black Panther, right? So I know. <laughs> but the face here, but we'll see. We'll uh, see. That would be amazing, and I can't wait for the all male whacking crew show performance. Me too. I think Whoa. that, yeah, people would uh, die just seeing a trailer of that. Uh, mm. So super exciting, and. Um, yeah. In the end of my interviews, I always have something called fill in the blanks. I'm fill going blanks. to fill in the blanks. I start a sentence and you end with one word or maximum an end of a sentence. But got you're you. an actor, so you got it. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. As a dancer, self-care means for me. Freedom. Boom. I feel the most unfuckable when I... I'm whacking. Oh, what a great commercial. <laughs> the best advice I ever received was. Oh, oh, make your mark. And I feel the most courageous when I. Not giving a fuck. 
boom everyone out there listening to this you you just give up give up ba, 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 for bag c the dancer the b-boy i was about to say the b day boy man bag c where can people find out more information about you the mic is yours oh come and check me out on insta grizzle instagram at bagsy official and also on my youtube page youtube.com Bagsy official, lots of cool stuff, lots of cool content. Come and DM me, ask me questions, share me your videos, your stories. I love to connect with people. So that's where you can find me. Boom. Thank you so much for your time. And I can't wait to follow your journey coming forward. <laughs> Thank you for having me. We did it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we did it. Don't forget to click subscribe, comment below, and give us a rating or review. We have a Facebook page, YouTube page, and we are on Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and all the other podcast platforms. We also have an Instagram, so don't forget to tag us in your favorite episode and share it with the world, because we read all of it.